Hey, second grade. Have you ever been to Reno, Nevada? Probably not. Like, no one goes to Reno, Nevada. But I do. I got family that lives out there, so we go to Reno all the time. I'll tell you something. Reno is a lot different than Des Moines is, especially with their weather. Reno is kind of in a desert. So what we're going to do today is we're going to learn about the Reno weather. And we're going to take some notes, find some information, and then use the computer to make graphs. And that graph will chart out the temperature of Reno and also how much rain and snow it gets. So get ready as we use computers to take data. All right, second grade, let's get cracking. Today, I need you to find in that packet of stuff that we sent home uh, the paper that looks like this, this paper over here. Um, it says weather data for Reno. What we're going to do today is we are going to find information about the temperatures and the rainfall in a place called Reno. And then we are going to use that information to make a graph because computers are great, great tools for uh, collecting data, finding data, and then graphing that data to show us kind of what the data means. And then we can we can look at the data and say, oh, like there's some patterns or there's some relationships that we see. So uh, first things first, find this paper. Then you need to find, well, a pencil too. Also get a pencil. Then we need to also find my website. Here it is. You're gonna go to my website. And you're going to click on the two for second grade, right down here. And then you're going to scroll to the bottom and find Reno Weather. Clicking open Reno Weather takes you to a page. And here I have collected for you the average high temperatures for every month in Reno. Now, what does the average high temperature mean? It means it's not the hottest that January gets. It's not the coldest. It's right there in the middle, like normal day. So this is a normal day, and I see in January uh, right now, you know, you can kind of look outside and see what it is in Iowa, but in a normal day in January, it's 46 degrees. Uh, that's pretty warm. That's, that's a, you could wear like a jacket and still have outside recess all the time in January. So that's not too bad for an average, not the coldest, the average January day in Reno. So what do we got to do with that? Well, we're going to take this information that I have given you, and we need to put it into a graph. And so to put it in a graph, what that means, and that was not what I want. Uh, what that means is that we are going to um, zoom into my whiteboard here, and let me zoom in so you can kind of see this here. Here I see January, and it says blank, and it says degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to look at my website, and I'm going to see... I saw that it was 46 degrees in January. I'm going to look again at my website, and let's see here. Uh, uh, it looks like it is now going to be 52 degrees. That's right, 52 degrees in February. Okay, so I'm going to switch back here. 52 degrees. Uh, let's see, back over here we've got... March being 57 and 57. And I'm going to have you go through all the way to the end, including July. Notice that when we get to July, July is on the other side of the chart, but it's it's there. So let's let's look at it here. Oop, I'm kind of I'm losing the light. Um okay, so July is 91. So let's see what. July turns out to be so 91 degrees in July. Looks like this. Okay. I need you to find all of the information for those 12 months. Next, after we do that, we're going to scroll down. We're going to take a look at the average rainfall. This is when you collect all the rain in a month, on a normal month. Not the wettest month, not the driest month, but a normal month. And they've done this for years and years, maybe 100 years. They've collected all the rain and all the snow that's fallen in January. And they put it in it together and they say, all right, on normal January, how much do you get? So here I see it says average 1.06 inches. This is right underneath high temperatures, 1.06. So I need to write that here. I have a spot for my one, 
there's the decimal, a zero, and a six. The decimal means that this is like a whole, a whole inch or whatever, whole number here, and this is just a part of it. So the decimal is important because it's not 106 inches, it's one and then six tenths, no, six hundredths of an inch. So not, not much of an inch. And that's gonna be important as we go through the rest of the rainfall data because the rest of the rainfall data says, all right, so what do we got here? We got um, 1.06, ooh, and then I'm gonna write that down, 1.06, and look at March, 0 0.86. 0 0.86. That means in March, you're not even going to get a full inch of rain, which is we can get like an inch of rain in a day. We can sometimes get four inches of rain in a day, and they don't even get a full inch of rain in a whole month out in Reno. Your job is to go through again and to write down all of the data for um uh, rainfall. So that was March, April it is going to get in there too. I think I'm a little off on my thing. That's all right. Um, once you've finished and you've gotten all your data collected, then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to scroll the bottom uh, and we're going to click where it says click here to graph the data. Okay. Actually, I might, uh, this is what I'm doing with all the other kids. You guys probably have it right in your Google Classroom assignment anyway. So open this document called Weather Data for Reno right in your Google Classroom, and it's going to look like this. It's a pre-made um, sheet, and a sheet is really good for collecting data and then turning it into a graph. We use it to collect and organize information in graph form. So I've got a big section over here that says no data, and that's fine. Because what I'm going to do is I'm first going to look over here uh, at my white or at my notes. And when I have my notes, I need to find what I said was the January temperature uh, in Reno. So I'm going to click with my mouse where it says January and temperature. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and write down, I said, what did I say? 46 degrees, 46. And then I push the enter key to put it in the graph. Now take a look right away, my graph is starting to fill in. I have temperature over here, I have months on the bottom, I have a dot, a little bit below 50. Let's see what happens when I put in February's temperature at 52 degrees. Oh, a line starts to show up, 57 degrees. And it's gonna keep going up. All right, so the more that we put in, the more information we are going to be able to find. Let's go ahead and I want you to keep filling out that uh, the rest of that graph uh, with, <clears throat> um, with temperature. And I'm gonna do that real fast so that we can then talk about the next step after that. Okay, so here I go and you do. Okay, now it's time for us to do the same thing, except we need to do it over here in rainfall. So we're gonna find rainfall and we're gonna type in uh, January was one, and then it's really important because it's 1.06, one and six hundredths, use the period key on your keyboard to find, or to make the decimal and then use a zero. Like all of those decimal places, all those place values that we wrote down in our notes have to be the same in order for this to make any sense. When I push enter, the graph's gonna change a little bit. So there I have a 1.06, then I have another, and then my line's gonna start to show up, but it's gonna jump around as the graph tries to figure out what exactly it's doing here. Um, and what's gonna happen is I'm actually gonna have rainfall over here on the right-hand side and I'm going to have temperature over here on this side. It's two graphs on top of each other. Let's see what they look like. You go ahead, you do the same thing. Hey, 
now that we see our graph, we can see some relationships here. And that's what really what we're, we're doing with this activity is looking for the relationships in the data. Do you see how in the temperature, which is the red line, how the red line goes up and gets hottest in June and July and then comes back and kind of gets coldest in our winter months? That makes sense, right? But take a look at what happens with the blue line for the most part. The blue line shows how wet it gets. It looks like it's the wettest when it's the coldest. And then as it warms up, what kind of happens to how wet it gets? It gets drier. And then it goes up and gets wet again. This line kind of shows us how the relationship between how hot it gets and how much rain Reno gets is kind of opposite. The more hot, the less rain or snow. That's what we use computers to do. We use it to find these graphs and then to be able to see uh, any sort of relationships or patterns that might show up in the data. All right, so I hope that you are able to create your graph. You can turn it in to me and I can take a look at it if you want. And then, um, like I said, that's gonna be our activity for today. So hope you had a good time. And next time we get together, we're actually gonna do this activity again, except we're gonna compare three different cities from around the world. And we're going to see just how different cities around the world can be when it comes to their temperature. All right. I'll see you next time.